Hey guys, welcome. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get started making particles in Unity. I'm going to walk you through setting up three different particles and we'll cover a lot of the options going through those so you can really get comfortable with this as fast as possible. I'll also show you how to spawn them into your scene and how to rotate them based on your attack direction. Let's get started. So we're starting off with a very, very simple scene here with basically just a player and some enemies and some grass. You don't need assets to follow along with this tutorial. However, if you like the assets that you see in this project, you can download them for free. You can use them personally or commercially. That's totally up to you. I'll leave a link down below in the description. I hope you enjoy. So basically what I've got here is I'm able to damage all three of these objects in the scene here. And I really want to spice this up and be able to add some particles when we damage the enemies. So we're going to dive right in and start off right with a new particle. So click here, go to effects and click particle system. Let's call this enemy damage one. So this is the default particle system that it will set up automatically. If you go down to renderer here, you can see it assigned the sprite lit default material to it. I would like to start off by creating a brand new material. Let's go into our assets, create a new folder called materials. Open that up. And here let's create a new folder called particle system. Go in there and let's create a new material called enemy damage mat one. And I would actually like to change the shader to universal render pipeline. 2D sprite unlit. And the reason I want to select unlit is you can see if we assign this material, drag that in there, you can see if we dim the global lights, these particles are going to show up no matter what. So if you would like them to be affected by lights, then be sure to select the 2D sprite lit default shader. I'm going to select a texture here and go with the circle with soft edge. That is included in the asset pack that you can download. Again, it's in the description. So let's select that. All right, so we've got something. So if you've never worked with a particle system before, this can all be very intimidating looking. However, you'll find that as you make a lot more particle systems that you start playing around with the same values again and again. But we'll go through quite a few of the most common settings right here. So I'm going to let this just keep on playing so that I can see what we're changing here. Now we're going to change the duration over here to 0.25 and that's not going to be noticeable because we are looping right now but the duration is the amount of time that the particle system is actually spawning particles into the world. And for a lot of these here I like to change the drop down. I'm going to go to start lifetime and let's choose random between two constants. Giving it a little bit of randomness in every way that you possibly can usually results in something that looks a lot better. So let's go 0.25 and 0.4. I'm gonna move this over so I can see it a little more. For our start speed, I'm also gonna select random between two constants. We're gonna go six to eight. And let's do our start size and also do random between two constants and go 0.15 and 0.55. So what I would like to get is these particles that when I hit the enemies, they're going to shoot out with some trails behind them. It's going to look really nice. So next, let's change the emission. So currently it is spawning 10 particles per second. I actually don't use rate over time too, too often. If we zero that out and if we go rate over distance instead, what you can see is that will only spawn particles if you are actually moving the object around in the scene. And it's especially if you're going to be using rate over distance, the one thing that you really want to know is do you want to be using the simulation space local or world? You can see right now with local, it's moving the whole particle system, right? If we change that to world and drag it around, you can see how each individual particle kind of has its own spawn point that doesn't change. So that's what those do. Let's zero those out. I actually want to go with a burst. Let's click the plus. And actually these default settings are just fine. I'm just gonna uncheck looping because that's getting a little bit annoying. Next, let's define the shape of the particle system and get it looking in kind of the right shape that we're going for. So let's open shape here. Now I almost always stick with circle and I'll tell you why. I have an orthographic camera right now, so you can't tell. However, for those of you who are using a perspective camera, you can see that even though this is a 2D scene, if you're using a 3D shape like a cone, it's actually going to be spawning particles that get closer and closer to the camera. And you might want that, but in this case, I definitely don't. So I'm actually going to leave our camera at perspective to make sure that we don't make that mistake. So what I'm going to do is change this to circle. It automatically rotates particle systems on the X by minus 90 degrees. Let's zero that out and always make sure your Z axis is on zero as well, especially if you're working in 2D. So I don't want to spawn all of these in a circle. I really only want to be using a portion of this circle. So for the arc here, let's go with 75 degrees and let's rotate it minus 35 on the z-axis. Now that's already starting to look pretty good there. So let's add a few more things. You can change the radius thickness if you want. So you can see I'm changing that line there and that's just keeping the area from which the particles can actually spawn bigger. And if I zero that out, then it's only going to be able to spawn right on that line. So go with whatever your preference is. I'm going to leave it at zero. Next, let's choose color over lifetime and we'll actually need to check that and open it up. 
So this is a gradient here. We've got the alpha controls on the top and the color controls at the bottom. So for the starting color, let's just go with kind of a light red. And I'm going to insert that there and drag the alpha at the end down to zero so that we get this nice fade out. Next, let's also change the size over lifetime. Select that and open it up. And if you click this and nothing appears, just drag this bar up. I'm going to select this one and add this key up like this. So that's going to get bigger really, really quickly and then kind of slow down for most of the lifetime of the particle system. Next, let's get some noise going in here. Let's open that up. Noise is really cool and I'll turn looping back on so you can kind of see what this does. It's only affecting the position because we've got a one in the position amount. You can fiddle around with the strength and the frequency to really start adding some randomness to the movement of your particles. And of course, you can do that with rotation as well as well as with scale if you really want to. I'm going to zero that out and put a one back in the position. And let's go with one in strength and 1.25 in the frequency. Let's close that. And let's also get some trails going behind these. So as soon as you select trails here in your renderer, a second trail material slot opens up. Let's duplicate that first material and name it enemy damage trail mat one. Let's assign that and open up the trails. So currently every single particle is now gonna have a trail that follows behind it. I think that's a little bit too much. So let's go with half the amount. Let's also make the lifetime only half the lifetime of the particle system. I'm also gonna give the trails a color over lifetime gradient. So I'll go over here and select gradient. I'm gonna give it that similar nice red color and decrease the alpha at the end as well. I'm gonna change width over trail to random between two constants. Go 0.75 and 1.25. There we go, that's looking really nice. Let's save that as a prefab now. So back in our root assets folder, let's create a new folder called prefabs and just drag that in there. The other really cool thing with particle systems is if you right click that and click effects and go particle system force field, add that as a child object of your initial particle system. If you go back to your particle system and you enable external forces, you can now apply all of these outside forces to your particle system. So let's try gravity just as an example. It's not doing a whole lot, so let's increase the range. Now you can see it's kind of just sucking it back in. If we increase the duration and the lifetime, you can get some pretty weird stuff happening. So I'm not going to save that. I just wanted to show that to you. I'm going to delete that. Now, before we continue with the next particle systems, I'm going to actually get this spawning into our scene when we damage our enemies. So if you want to know how to apply damage to various objects in your scenes, this guy has just a grass script, but it also has health. This guy has an enemy health script, yet you want to know how to damage both of them. I do have a tutorial that can show you how to do that. However, you can spawn this particle system in wherever you are actually applying damage to your enemy. Or if you just want to test it out, you can code it so that when Whenever you hit the space bar or something, it'll spawn somewhere. It's very, very easy to set up. I'm going to open up my enemy health script as well as my grass script. And I really just want to add a serialized field private particle system damage particles. I also want to create another private particle system called damage particles instance. So this is going to be a reference to our prefab, but this is going to be a reference to the instance of each individual prefab that we are spawning into the scene in case you want to change any of the settings within the particle system. I just want to instantiate the particle system right here in the damage function. I'll create a new function for that called private void spawn damage particles. So we're going to say damage particles instance is equal to instantiate. What are we instantiating the damage particles? Where do we want to spawn this? At the current transform dot position. And we want to spawn it in with no rotation, so quaternion dot identity. Let's call that here. Same thing in my enemy health script. I'm going to click on my first enemy, and now you can see there's this damage particles here. Let's drag in our prefab, and let's test that out. Okay, so you can see that that worked, but there are also three particle systems stuck in my scene here, and we don't want those clogging up our memory. We want to get rid of those as soon as the particle systems are done playing. So to do that, we're going to open up our prefab, and down here at stop action, select destroy. Let's try that again. All right, you should now see them coming in and then destroying themselves as soon as they're done playing. There we go. Great. Now let's get another particle system going, and this one I want to spew out, and I want to have it kind of like splatter when it hits the ground and kind of turn into another little little mini particle system. And I would also like them to kind of be rotated in the direction that they're traveling. So I'll show you how to set that up. So first, let's create a new particle system called enemy damage two. I'm going to reset the transform and just move it over here. I'm going to create a new material for that. I'm just going to duplicate enemy damage mat one, rename that to enemy damage mat two. 
and assign that material down in the renderer. Okay, so again, you can see that they're kind of shooting off into the distance there. That is again because of our perspective camera. So let's actually change the shape first. Change it from cone to circle. And we're gonna make the arc only 70 degrees. Let's rotate it on the Z axis by minus 30. Great, let's make the duration of this system 0.25 seconds. I am going to make the lifetime speed and start size all random between two constants. For the lifetime, let's go 0.85 and 1.25. For the speed, let's go six and eight. And for the start size, 0.2 and 0.6. I'm also going to change the gravity modifier to random between two constants and make that 1 and 1.5. Let's also turn on collisions for this. So nothing's changed yet, so we want to open that up. We definitely don't want planes. We want to select world and mode. We want to set that to 2D. And now it's going to collide with absolutely anything that has a collider. So let's go ahead and I'm going to change that to just ground. So these are bouncing around like crazy and I don't want that. So I'm going to change the bounce to zero. And now they're sliding all over the place and I don't want that either. So I'm gonna change the dampen to one. Okay, let's also enable color over lifetime. Always nice to get a nice fade out. Let's also open up a mission and get rid of rate over time and add another burst. Let's turn off looping. While we're up here, let's change stop action to destroy so that just like the other one, it doesn't end up clogging our scene. It'll destroy itself when it's done playing. I'm also gonna change the size over lifetime. I'm gonna make the starting point 0.7, just like that. That's great. Now you can see as we're shooting them out, they're still perfect circles. But if we go down here to renderer and we change the render mode from billboard to stretched billboard, now you can see they're orienting themselves in the direction of their velocity, which looks really nice. Now I would like some sort of reaction to happen when these things actually collide with the ground. So we want a sub emitter. Go ahead and select that and open it. And we want to create a sub emitter on a collision. Let's click the little plus button right here to create a new sub emitter particle system. What that does is that'll create a new child particle system called sub emitter, and it'll automatically assign that right here. So you can look here and you can inherit a few things if you want, or you can totally change everything yourself. So off the bat, it's looking a little bit weird. And the reason that it's behaving so strangely is because back in our parent particle system, the lifetime loss here is set to zero, which means that the particle is sitting there on the ground, not dying right away, and it's just spawning a sub emitter again and again and again, which is taking it above its max particles of 1000. So what we want to do is in the parent down here in collision, we want to change the lifetime loss to one. Now you can see if we hit play. It looks a little better anyways. So let's go back to our sub emitter and open up the renderer and assign the same material as our parent material. Now the sub emitter is just a little too much. So let's tighten some of those things up. I want this to be really quick. So we're gonna do 0.25 for the duration. I want my lifetime to be random between two constants and the speed and the start size. We're gonna go 0.2 and 0.25 for the lifetime, six and eight for the speed and 0.1 and 0.2 for the start size. Constrain this for just a second and make it 0.7. Let's add gravity of 1.25. It's looking good, it's just a little bit much. Let's bump the emission burst down to 20 and let's make the shape a circle. Full circle is totally fine. And let's again do the color over lifetime to make sure that we get a nice gradual fade out. There you go, if we assign that one as a prefab, let's click on our enemy two and assign that one and test it out. Uh, you'll notice if you attack them from the other side that the particles still go in the same direction. I'll show you how to fix that very shortly. But first, let's get rid of this. And I want to create our last particle system, which is going to be the grass being cut apart here. So let's go to Effects, Particle System. Call it Grass Particles. Let's reset the transform. I'm going to move that down here over the grass. And let's duplicate Enemy Damage Mat 2 and call it Grass Damage Mat. I'm going to go to the texture here and I'm going to select the stems texture. That is actually three separate sprites in one. So I will show you how to deal with that. Let's go ahead and assign that material to the renderer. Okay, so right off the bat, this is looking pretty weird. It's just spawning three grass blades beside each other. So what we're going to do to handle that is select the texture sheet animation. So this is a grid and it was a three by one grid. So now you can see it's only spawning in one grass stem at a time. However, if you watch them, they're kind of animating through all three of the sprites, and that's not what we want. But we've got this start frame option here. So I'm gonna select that and open random between two constants. And I want the start frame to be somewhere between zero and three. And I'm going to change the frame over time to a constant zero. There you go. So now it'll just pick one and it'll stick with it the entire time. Even though if you look, this was the sprite in the editor, right? So we're having to cycle through these three different ones. So 
So next, let's bump up the start size a little bit, get them matching our actual grass in the ground here. Our duration is going to be 0.2. Let's change the start lifetime and start speed to random between two constants. And we're going to do 0.85 and 1.5 and a speed of 0.25 to 0.55. This is going to be pretty slow. I actually also want to check the 3D start rotation and let's change that to random between two constants. And I want to randomly rotate the starting rotation of these grass blades between 0 and 360 on the z-axis. I'm going to change the gravity modifier to 0.2. Let's uncheck looping and change the stop action to destroy. Let's change the emission from rate over time to a burst. And let's see how 20 looks. Let's make sure that our shape is just a circle. Let's make it fade out over time again, so color over lifetime. You know the drill. Put that there and change the alpha to zero. Let's also get them rotating a little bit over their lifetime. You could do this with noise, but we can also do rotation over lifetime. Let's separate our axes so we get the separate x, y, and z. Let's change this to random between two constants. And let's say anywhere on the z from minus 45 to 45. Now you get this nice kind of slow rotation happening over their lifetime. Great, okay, let's make that a prefab. Let's delete that. Let's go to our grass and drag that in. And let's test that. Awesome. All right, and last but not least, I wanna show you how you can fix it so that even if you're attacking from another direction, you can actually get the particles traveling in the direction that you want them to be going in. So my grass and my enemy health, they are both implementing an eye damageable interface. And I'll open that up for you. I cover all of this in my melee attack tutorial, so I'll just show you the script. Really, it's just public interface eye damageable with a public method and a public bool. And then over here in enemy health and in grass, we just add a comma after mono behavior and add eye damageable. You then have to add the public bool as well as the public method. And as you've already seen, we are spawning in the damage particles in our our actual damage function. So since I have both of these scripts coming from an actual interface here, what I would like to do is go into my interface and add in a vector to attack direction. Now you can't get an interface wrong because honestly, when you go back to your scene, you're going to be flooded with errors as soon as you change something. And that is because we are not implementing the new change that we just made. It's really, it's just complaining that in my health scripts, I am not including our new parameter of vector two attack direction. So we don't know what this is yet, right? I haven't showed you where this damage function is actually being called from. This is just a blank that can be filled in from the source. But since we have this in here, we can actually code the rotation right now. So what we're gonna do is inside our spawn damage particles, let's add a quaternion called spawn rotation. And that's going to be equal to a quaternion dot from to rotation. Now we're going to be calling this from a vector to dot right. And the reason we're doing that is because this is literally from to. We literally set this up pointing to the right. We could face this up, right, and call and instead put in vector to dot up here. But let's just stick with what we already had. So we're translating it from a vector to dot right. And what's our two direction? Well, our two direction is going to be the attack direction. So what we want to do is in spawn particles here, we want to pass in vector to attack direction and put that here. Now it's going to want that in these brackets here. So we will pass in attack direction over here. And I'll just copy and paste this into my other enemy scripts as well. So now our very last error is actually pointing to our player attack where we are passing in I damageable dot damage. We're passing in the float that it wants, but now we need an attack direction. And with the way that my character works, the attack direction is simply just his transform dot right. Now, the very last thing that needs to do is when we actually do the spawn damage particles, you can see here when we're instantiating our particles, we passed in quaternion dot identity. We now want to put in our spawn rotation instead. And let's test that. Awesome. Well, there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. It really helps grow the channel. And let me know down in the comments if you have any ideas for future tutorials you'd like to see. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.